Good evening, baseball fans. It is Monday, July 1st. Oh my goodness, I can't believe we're actually in July. July 1st, Gals. My goodness. I'm Susie. That is Kelsey. This is Bourbon and Baseball, all the balls edition. And away we go. I'm going to give you the rated R warning right off the top because I'm a considerate host. That's what I like to do. I don't want to offend anybody. So this is a rated R podcast for all of the cuss words and probably some inappropriate adult humor, but mainly for the cuss words, not for anything else. So don't expect any nudity. That's for the only I'm just kidding. No way. Just all of the Okay. So if you have children, if you don't want the children to learn new cuss words, you should probably turn this off, put some ear pods in, whatever, or your must on the kid. That probably works too. Or get out a lot out of here because I say that there's other baseball shows that don't cuss. Who knows? I actually don't. So all the ones that I watched, you're SOL, apparently, if you uh, don't want the cussing. Apologize about that. Because that's not who I am as a person. But with that, we're going to start the show. Kelsey, if I were to tell you that vibes are a thing in an MLB clubhouse, which they team, obviously are. Yes. What team now has the highest vibes in baseball? This week, vibes were undoubtedly won by the New York Mets. The New York yeah. Metropolitans, as one would imagine, preseason, right? And no I time did not anyone York. ever expect Grimace and a pop star to ever be ingratiated in the MLB store line. Not, oh, even, no, no, not even a little bit. Did not see it coming. They were probably the, one of the last teams that I expected to even allow this kind of fun and greatness to play out on the field. The Jose Iglesias, a.k.a. Candelita, performing postgame after the Mets-Astros game on Friday night was easily my favorite thing that the Mets have ever done outside of losing to the Cardinals in the 2006 NLCS. And that is saying a lot. But nothing would actually... Not nothing. I got to stop saying this. There are some things. But it would actually give me great pleasure to see the Mets contend in a season where they shed payroll and had to be more strategic after their insane spending and loaded roster last season which i just couldn't talk enough smack about where because money with without vibes and strategy is wasted money like i don't actually want to see steve cohen win a world series but i do want to see that narrative of vibes and strategy over money play out on the national stage do i think it's actually going to happen no but this is the time this is the mets time to shine in the first five years of steve cohen and man if he had anything to do with making this happen then High five to you, Uncle Steve. That's fair. Yeah, I certainly was not expecting a full-fledged concert after the Friday night game. I don't know what actually would have happened had the Astros won that Friday night game because the vibes were extra high since yeah. since they beat us. But the fact that, A, I was still salty about the loss, but B, could appreciate the concert and the fact that all of the Met came out on the field. Was that not to- the best part? rally around Jose Iglesias and then just sing the song and Pete Alonso, God, I love you. But this man does not have any throwing a rhythm at all. Bless his heart. He was repping. He had that ONG shirt and he was feeling himself. Okay. He was. Actually, DJ Stewart had worse rhythm than Pete Alonso. We found out so many great things, so many impeccable takeaways from this like two and a half minute performance. DJ Stewart is somebody who claps on the one and the three. Come on. He's that guy. It's just so relatable. There are so many reasons why this was great for the game of baseball. I always think it's cool to highlight a player for a talent outside of the sport. It makes us like more invested in them. It makes us see them right. as people. It also makes people want to come out to the ballpark. City Field has all these illusions of grandeur and, and big plans that I very much hope come to fruition for the borough of Queens and, and for New York in general. But the area outside of the stadium, it's not a place that you come and hang out at. And with the games now faster with the the pitch clock and stuff, it's going to present a challenge for especially families and groups of people that want to come out and and enjoy each other's company at the ballpark. Having stuff like this afterwards is a reason to go. And they did a really good job of promoting it ahead of time on social media, too. And now that we've seen something like that, I saw it on social media before it happened. And I didn't really put two and two together. I was like, oh, they're having some like artists that I don't know about or whatever. That's cool. I had no idea that it was him. Also, I, did you know I who Jose Iglesias was before? So for some reason, I was like, why do I, rec- I recognize the name? But I didn't recognize the name. And I just thought in my head, it was just, oh, okay. I recognize Iglesias, like Enrique Iglesias. Is that why I recognize it? For, for some reason, I recognize the song. And I don't know if it's because it was on, on TikTok or what, but I had heard the song before. And I'm trying to rock my brain to figure out where I had heard it before. Let me just tell you, I, I don't even know any of the lyrics. I don't know what they mean. All I know is that I love the beat and I will sing, oh my God, at the top of my lungs, day in, day out. It is so catchy. And again, I remind you, I was a salty Astro fan Friday night. Salty Astro right. fan. And right. I, so with me, I appreciate it. 
Even hey, a the pawn scum Mets era Cardinals fan, and you, after suffering a brutal loss to not one of the best teams in baseball, can appreciate this. Like everyone else in baseball must just be freaking out, right? I mean, yeah. we're still on cloud nine, riding high after Candelita's performance. I don't know, man. I just can't talk enough about how great it was. It was so fun, and baseball needs more fun on the field to get engagement for fans to keep the sport young and fresh and exciting and oh what i want to ask you is have you seen mlb network where mark DeRosa breaks down players swings and stuff oh yeah i have huh so where he has like the big screen next to him yeah. and he's like okay pause it right there now run it back we're gonna watch how he follows through on this one oh, pause it right there see how he makes contact he flattens it out so i want to do a video like that but it's gonna be me breaking down this performance like oh my gosh, yeah. I remember video. Yeah. So I'll try to get with my tech team here, producer June, my dog here, and see if we can make that happen. Um, <laughs> but do. that would be that's amazing. Been, like, I would love that so much. in my mind because there were just so many magical takeaways from that that two and a half minute video. And oh yeah, yeah. And I loved that's Charlene Marte just going live on Instagram, just hey, join the party. And I like, I love it. I just, yeah, I love it so much. It's so great. We need and so much more of that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The vibes were high, and then the Astros killed the vibes. As we are known to do. Sorry about it. You know, not to so Week it day by day. That's what the Mets are going to have to do right, right now. They're 40 and 41, I believe, fighting for 500. But man, I don't think at some point this season, even a couple weeks ago, you didn't necessarily think they'd even be there. That's true. And now we, as in the Astros, are over 500. We have joined the over 500 club, Kels, and I am very excited about it. And the, ooh, look at you, Mets. Good job. Mets, like I said, we're very salty about the Astros winning that series. And I told, the guys in my fantasy league who are mostly Mets and Yankees fans, but mostly Mets. Okay, go out and take your aggression out on the Nats. Surely you can beat the Nats. They were not currently when we started, but now it's the bottom of the 10th and it is nine to four. And they have scored Whoa, 10 in training. Oh, excuse me, six. Yeah, okay. wow. So good on you, Matt. Good, good on you. Me. So there's some fighting Met that, you know, that everyone's ever dead. They're not dead Mets. yet. They be they used to be known, they have been known as LOL Mets. Now they're OMG mm-hmm. Mets. Really, oh, and Gmet, they've really turned the corner, for sure, for sure. And you know what? I see people hating on it. I don't know. I don't understand why. It doesn't smell. I'm sorry. Again, if we're not hating on it, just lo- it's fun. It's oh. it's like pure wholesome fun. You have to like, love it. Why, you know, why do you hate fun, people? Yeah. Why do you hate fun? Why? Oh, yeah. So but okay. I asked this on Twitter, and it did not get much engagement. And I'm very upset about it because I really hoped that people would take it and run with it yeah. and tell me who out of their team would be pop stars or who would make a boy band. So tell me, girls, on the Cardinals, who would make a boy band or who would be a pop star? So you know what? This is a conversation I have tried to have many times before. I was on a Cubs podcast or a Chicago sports podcast the end of last season, maybe. And I, I said, what five MLB players? Because we were doing, it was, it's like baseball and pop culture. So we were doing like top boy band songs. And mm-hmm. then I also wanted to do like top five players currently in Major League Baseball that would be on a boy band. And it was really hard for anyone else to come up with ideas like this. And I also talked about it with the guys at Bucko Banter who have the Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. And they said that they sat for three full minutes while they were recording, trying to think of anybody and just anybody at all. They were like, we're going to have to dig into the minor league system. But, oh, man, I think there's so many fun characters in baseball. Harrison Bader, you saw him out there in his pink crop top. Like, he's just mm-hmm. banging in a boy band. I think Lars Newbar would be the classic front man, golden boy heartthrob for okay. sure. Okay, okay. I can see that. Ooh, man. You know what? I have so many that I have thought of. I'm going to see if I can find my notes because I've already done some hard research. <laughs> You're like, let me, I put some deep thought into it. So I really did. From the Pirates, though, I think Connor Joe could secretly do it. Absolutely. Okay. Connor Joe. And then, you know who I think Sneaky could do it? Jerry Jones. Ooh, yeah. I could see that. He's yeah. got the hair. Apparently, one of his favorite songs, they did one of those TikToks where tell me what song you could sing word for word or whatever. And most of the guys were country songs or rap songs. You know what Jerry Johnson's was? Unwritten the Natasha Bedingfield. I do. Okay. I do remember like seeing this. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Jerry Jones, you are maybe not so under the radar for sure. Like in the boy band. I love that. Wow. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going to have to tweet that to the guys at Bucko Banter because they were having a really hard time. But we've got, so I should mention that the Cardinals have Victor Scott too in their system, who is a hip hop recording artist. So they better, the Cardinals are the last freaking team that's going to do anything fun in baseball. But we need fun and we need Victor Scott. I need to tag me and Victor Scott 
I will. I'll Don't. send you his Instagram handle. He has okay. some really cool stuff out there. But okay, so I actually made note of the top five current Major League Baseball players to make up a boy band. And I associated with them like that because all boy bands have the type of guy, right? Well, in sync, like Chris is the same as Kevin in Backstreet Boys. So the Chris Kevin kind of character, Mac Carpenter. Okay. Yeah, okay. he's got solid facial hair. Mm-hmm. He seems mm-hmm. he might be a little bit more mature, but like he's down to freaking clown. Then we've got the Lance from NSYNC with the Howie Backstreet Boys. Lance yep. and Howie are the same. George Springer. Not sure how you feel about that one, but I think he has that like that gentleness about him. He's like secretly really suave. Yeah. Uh, I've I seen mentioned- his dance moves. So yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I mentioned Lars Newbar. He would be like the JC and NSYNC or the Brian and Backstreet Boys. This one might be a hot take, but you got to give it up for Jazz Chisholm Jr. He's just dripping with some kind of pop, hip hop, rap star vibes. He would be like the Joey and NSYNC or the AJ and Backstreet Boys. It's a little edgy. Yeah. Who? Okay. Justin Timberlake, Nick Carter. Like, who is the Justin Timberlake, Nick Carter front man in Major League Baseball? It's for me, it's got to be Adley Rutschman. I don't know if we could actually get it out of him, but he had to pick her call. I was thinking that Adley is, is too goody to shoe. Like, he's he too did. Good. But that's how Justin and Nick started, right? So, we'll never know. Okay. All right. See, I was going to go possibly Gunner, but I can see Adley. Did you see? Shout out to the Orioles marketing department, PR department, social media team. They are repping them boys for the All-Star game. They're making them dress up and do shit. And did you see Ryan O'Hearn break a bat over his knee? I did not. I did not. They have been, like you said, they have been pumping out the content. So I'm sure I've missed some of it, but... uh, amazing. We did it, what is it, two, three hours ago or something? And they are, they pull head to toe. They look like they stepped out of Desperado, full cowboy guard. Hey. And they've got them all lined up. And Ryan O'Hurd just takes this bat and just breaks it over his knee. And then Gunner breaks character and then they all laugh. But I was all, I, I would have been aware of your power, Ryan O'Hurd. Oh my God. Oh. Beautiful. Oh, um, very impressive. One more that we, that I think could be added to, to the boy bands, Fernando Tati's here. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Right. Dripping with pop star vibes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. I'm all maybe like Fernando Tatis Jr. and Jose Iglesias can make up some sort of Latin. I'm like, I don't know what Jose Iglesias is. Is he Puerto Rican? Is he Dominican? He's Cuban. together. I don't know. Cuban. Oh, Cuban. That's right. That's right. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Maybe they can make up some sort of band. Who knows? But I think all the flavors should be delightful. Yeah, we are here for it. Listen, I was at the Adam Wainwright concert that they did after the second to last game of the season at Bush Stadium last year, which was very cool, but it was not near. This is what it was missing was the engagement and the mm-hmm. on the fieldness. They, yeah. they put Adam up like in center field, like even behind the bullpens and stuff. And it was very oh. not no, as exciting as I wanted it to be. And I know logistically that's challenging, but also this is a major league baseball stadium. I think we can figure it out. So let's put some more investment into uh, figuring out the logistics around making a concert happen immediately after a game with good lighting and sound. They can do it. They did a Riley Green concert on the field at the Philly Stadium last weekend after the game. So there are stadiums that have figured it out. Okay, so I was not aware that there was a music star with the name Riley Green. I was Uh, not aware of that. And maybe that Riley Green wants to give it to him too. Like, are you telling me that Riley Green can sing? And I don't remember who I was talking to, but they just looked at me like I was insane. Well, Riley Green. And I just kept repeating the name and they just kept repeating the name back to me. And I go, like, that outfielder, like the center fielder for the Detroit Tigers. And they're all absolutely not. Is he, what are you talking about? Well, we talk about baseball and Riley Green. That is typically yeah. the one you're going to think of first. Well, I was like, I don't know who. There's another Riley Green. And they're very disappointed. They're very disappointed in me. I was like, I'm so sorry. I, they're like, who are you talking about? I'm like, who are you talking about? It was a whole thing. But yeah, I I just learned the fact that there is, in fact, two different Riley Greens. Yeah. You know, Unpacked. We're learning all kinds of things from, yeah. from this music element, this performance element post-game. I love it. Do you think the musical star Riley Green would know or care that MLB took away the strike zone box? I think it would, because I think we should all care, because the biggest thing that we have to care about this, the biggest reason, is out of principle alone, the... MLB just like pulling a fast one and the MLBPA and completely not honoring the collective bargaining agreement. It The absolute disrespect is all I really care about. I don't want to argue about whether they should have it or not and whatever and the way that it might affect the relationship with or the in-game relationship with umpires or whatever. I don't care if you wanted to talk about it and have it on the table and negotiate it. That's what negotiations are for. You don't just like, right. go away with something and hope they won't notice or care. 
That is right. the weirdest bullshit I've ever heard, ever. And it is really shady. And it makes you think even more like how problematic this next CBA negotiations is going to be. Mark my words, people. You thought that the lockout for last season, this season? No, last season was bad? Yeah, 2020. It's going to be 10 times worse. I think there's going to be so many more things on the table and there's going to be so many more delays. Mm-hmm. It's going to be insane. What is that? Is it 2026 when they do the new CBA? Yeah. Yep. I, We're going to have to go back and cut this and then be like, we told you. We told you. We will. We'll have it for you. See, we see it in the future. What I did not see but, into the future was the Brewers acquiring Dallas. How do I say Dallas's last name? Keiko. 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 They're yeah. wrong. I know you say it right. Dallas Keiko for $1 from the Mariners in a blockbuster trade that happened over the week that we all just completely missed out on. But uh, yeah, what do you think about Dallas's fit with the Brewers? Uh, if anybody can fix the uh, what 36-year-old, 34-year-old Dallas Keiko, maybe it's the Brewers. I don't know. Because he bopped around after the Astros. He bopped around for a little while. I know he was with the White Sox for a little bit. And then I think he was in like the Boston Red Sox minor league for a little was. bit. Mm-hmm. And then he was in the Mariners organization, and now he's with the Brewers, and he started a game for them last week. Yes, he did. And I don't, great for you, Dallas, that you want to keep going and be a quote-unquote competitive baseball major league pitcher, but how much money has this man made? That's a lot of question to ask, because yeah, the why behind him continuing to try to work through any number of things here yeah he started i believe on june 25th he went four innings he allowed eight hits five runs two home runs a walk and no strikeouts and that is not shocking to anyone what was more shocking to me was that he was on the mariners i actually am not sure i knew that part i am good lord okay do you know over dallas heichel's career how much he's made in career earnings i have absolutely no idea he's been out there for a while Ninety. Seven million dollars. Okay. Yeah. So hang it up, bro. What, what are, are we doing here? Kids? Yeah. What are we doing? Oh, producer the... Fiona also doing some things. There she goes. Oh, poor dude. Good lord. Yeah. The last contract he got, big contract, was with the White Sox. He, he signed a three-year, fifty-five and a half million dollar contract with the White Sox. Average annual salary of eighteen five. So he went from getting eighteen five a year to seven hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, he's thirty six. Do you just have? Do you have a lot of bills? Do you have a lot of debt? Are you living beyond your means? Okay, well, I would hope that you did something with your money and made it grow. But yeah, I don't know. Is he married? Does he not? Yeah, he made he it is. married or oh, he is. Okay, I'm like married. He's he not have kids. Huh. He's married to I think her name is Kelly, and she is one of the MLB like network. Oh, Kelly she Nash. She does like yeah. a quick pitch something. Oh, yes. No, I definitely know Kelly Nash. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. And she's very successful in her own right. That's so interesting. I guess to some extent, it's, it's cool that it's not about money. But yeah, it's been a while. It's been a rough go. I'm not sure. He, he must still feel like he's got something to go out there and prove before it's all said and done. I He won the Cy Young in 2015. He won. And then in 20. 16, it looked like he won another gold glove. Went nine and 12. Seven, I don't know. Maybe he just really loves baseball and wants to be a baseball player. I don't know. But I guess good for you, Del Cycle. I love that you love what you're doing so much. Yeah, we'll see if he continues to get regular starts for the Brewers, too, who maybe it's okay if he's giving up five runs because the Brewers hit five grand slams in an eight game stretch here this past week. And I loved this quote from manager Pat Murphy when he was asked about it after the game in which they hit the fifth. He said, quote, we made a huge adjustment with the bases loaded. It's a secret plan. How to hit home runs with the bases loaded. It's been working. We bought it. It was a recipe online and we got it. I love that. I fucking love Pat Murphy. Like, I love Pat Murphy. Reason, I, listen, the Cardinals and Brewers don't have any, like, bad blood in general. Like, I'd always way rather the Brewers do well than really any other team in the National right. League. And but Pat Murphy bringing the vibes and just his style of leadership and the way that his fire has just clearly translated mm-hmm. to the team is a huge part of the reason why I just can't be mad about the success that the Brewers are having this season. Uh, yeah, no, I absolutely love it. And he hooked me with the Orange Lifesavers. Totally 100% hooked me with the Orange Lifesaver story and how 
He wants all the orange lifesavers. Give me all the orange lifesavers because nobody else wants orange lifesavers. I want them. Pat Murphy, I love you. If you guys don't know what the orange lifesaver story is, go Google it. It's amazing because those are the guys that global hard team. And Alex Michael is nothing if not an orange lifesaver. So there you go. I guess he fits right in. Absolutely. I get it. Did you see, I miss this, but this is interesting history that the Colorado Rockies made over the past week that the first walk-off win on a pitch violation in the history of Major League Baseball actually happened on June 23rd. Ryan McMahon drew a bases loaded walk in the ninth inning, resulting in the first walk-off pitch clock violation in MLB history as the Rockies defeated the Nationals in a game that everyone was watching 8-7. to seven. So We're lucky that it happened in a mid-June game of the Rockies versus the Nationals. I think you missed it because it is the Rockies and the Nats because it's Rockies and Nats. But I guess the the closer for the Nats, Kyle Finnegan, apparently this is his second or third pitch clock violation Ooh. like this season. Mm-hmm. And their manager, Davey Martinez, when they asked him about it, he goes, he's just a slow guy and just shrugs his shoulders. And just, yeah, he's just a slow guy. He knows about it. And I'm all, oh, okay. But can you imagine the uproar if this was, I don't know, Say a Yankees Red Sox game, or that's what I had to a mention. That because... a lot of eyeballs had a, had on right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I did not hear this talked about much at all. But that is definitely why. And it's just a good reminder that it absolutely can happen. Yeah. So we're talking about the Nats a lot for not a Nat podcast, but they so they got walked off on June twenty third, and then the next night they got walked off by the Padres. Did you see this? I did. Yes. I I was not aware that there was Padres. Nat beef. It seems but, like there's a lot of tensions brewing in the Nationals amongst Nationals themselves. So it doesn't surprise yeah. me that they're yeah, finding arguments to get in with other teams. But yeah, there are Nats Padres beef now. And I love that it happened with Jerks and Profar as the catalyst for all of this. Who, need I remind you people, signed for $1 million for the Padres this season because nobody else wanted him. And is, I'd say, far and away one of their best players possibly top three. Oh yeah definitely. the only reasons why Padres are doing right now is literally jerks and profar mm-hmm. so if you guys don't know what I'm talking about if you are like me and really only pay attention to your bubble Padres and Nats had the game and is the bottom of the chest Jay Cronenworth starting at second ghost runner and Donovan Solano doubles and now it's six to three Jackson Merrill with a two RBI single and now it's to five and you're all are they gonna do it are they actually going to do it? Fong Kim walk. Tyler Wade with a pinch hit sack bunt, moving the runners over. So that's your first out. David Peralta pops out. There's your second out. And then they intentionally walk Luis Arise to load the bases to get to Jerks and Profar. And after a seven pitch at bat, Jerks and Profar walks him off with a single and then proceeds to celebrate. Now, the Nats weren't thrilled with his celebration. And Jerkson said that he was just celebrating with the fans on the third base side i don't know what he was doing but you're in your own home park the other team intentionally walked someone to get to you and you walked him off i Hell guarantee yeah. you if i was the jerks and profile i would be peacocking bush hit him so, yeah. what's up now bitches what's up uh, now you just be hit that middle fingers everywhere yeah. everywhere all right double down and that's what i would do You'd be like running through the list of things you could do. Rocking the baby, like mm-hmm. everything. Like, All of it. You'd run back and all the braces to do it again. Look at me now, bitch. Is. Bitch, you know, I don't want to blame him at all. And so I, and I don't understand, but apparently the Nats took exception to this. The next day, this, and this is really what I don't understand because Kbert Ruiz is young. He's 24, 25. He is not a veteran in the game. Sure. So Jerickson Profar, the next day, next to bat, comes up and came. And I don't think that they're super friendly. I don't know if they're like friendly enough for Caber to apparently not really put hands on him. But he was like patting Jerickson Profar's shoulder. And you could tell in the video, Jerickson was like, doing like, why are you touching me? Are you touching me? But, like he made that face and just backed up. And that's when Manny Machado stepped in and then the bench just cleared. So warnings were issued to both sides. This is where I don't, what I don't understand. So the warnings were already issued. The next pitch. Mackenzie Gore, 98 mile an hour fastball to the kind of look like back shin of Jerks and Provar, but it hit his toe. So it hit him. Mm-hmm. Mackenzie Gore was not ejected. Not another warning was given. But then Mike Schilt comes out and he's like, 
And then yeah. my shelf was rejected. I'm all, I'm sorry. On principle alone, if right. Rory's already given, right. and Mackenzie Gore hit him, I realize it's not 98 to the numbers or whatever, but it still hit him. So he could have at least done something, but no, Mike Schultz ejected. And then, okay, fine. Kenzie Gore stays in the game. And then Manny Machado comes up. Manny Machado proceeds to hit a two-run bomb off the board, who used to be on the Padres. And then later in that game, Jerks of Profar hits a grand plan. The drama of this Nats Padres beef, I need all the drama. I need all the tea. And then after the game that first night, Jesse Winker is in the stands literally arguing with a 65-year-old man. Did you see that? No, but as you're like talking about this, all I'm thinking is Mets and Nationals are two teams that like almost like maybe were they going to be a little bit better than maybe we thought they could be. But in the last week, like the Nats, based on vibes alone, have written themselves off and the Mets have made themselves a part of the conversation. And again, if you had told me like one of these teams is going to show themselves out, so show themselves out and the other team is going to get you excited about them. Based on vibes alone, I would have picked the opposite. So it's just, yeah. I see. Je- yeah. Jesse Winker, I'm all, Jesse, what, what, what is we going doing? on? There's Why Chicago White Sox type anger going on in the Nats. I don't know. I would, but yeah. So apparently, just watch out for Padres, Nats, Beast. And I guess, I feel like maybe being walked off in back-to-back night could be a little oh. fresh. So maybe, maybe there's a little bit of leftover energy from that. That's, maybe that, I don't know. But all I'm saying is, there is now Padres Nats beef that we need to be aware of and just keep eyeballs on anytime the Nats are in now. Again, that sentence would not have been on my baseball bingo card. No. Nope. Ever. At all. Maybe it's Jesse Winker. Because didn't Jesse Winker yell at people when he was on the Reds? Was he on the mm-hmm. I feel like he was on the Reds and then he went to the Mariners. Are you an angry person, Jesse Winker? I think he is. I think there's, and I think there's like some sort of, there's some sort yeah, of. Yeah, he was on the Reds, the Mariners, the Brewers. He's been around the block. I I think Jesse Weaker has got a little anger issue. Hmm. He's got like Anthony Rendon vibes. Without or, Anthony he, Rendon type talent. He does. Yeah. I could see that even without knowing any background on it. Yeah. I want to say that he got into it with Van when he was with the Reds. And I think maybe with the Mariners. Or there's, I think there's not some story about maybe he was like super lazy or something. Like he didn't put in the work for, with the Mariners. I have a lot to Google it and see oh, if I can yeah. dig up that there source. Is, yeah. There, so I guess in 2021, a Mets fan had a sign calling Jesse Winker a bitch and he wanted to frame it, actually. So oh, okay. I guess he went and tried to ask the fan to give him the sign so he could frame it. That's the story I'm finding here. That's Outside of him having scary. a shouting match with a 66-year-old Padres fan. Yeah, I guess I didn't realize that there was specifically drama around Jesse Winker in general, but... Yes, he flipped off the crowd after he got hit by a pitch against the Angels when he was on the Mariners. So, yeah, there's his. Oh. Okay, so so maybe Jesse Winker is the wrong one. <laughs> yeah. But so keep an eye out on that. And we'll move on from Jesse Winker being angry to starting pitchers, apparently getting angry at their team and yeah, firing them up. What happened? Did You didn't see either one of these? No. Oh, okay. What Kelsey is referring to on our notes is... This line, Justin Steele slash Marcus Stroman yells at teams, question mark. So apparently Marcus Stroman was, which game was this for the, for they lost the first game to the Blue Jays. They got like, annihilated by the Blue Jays. First well, game of the Yankees Blue Jays series. I, think, I feel like it must have been after that. I think that's, I think that's what it was. And Marcus Stroman got really mad at Glaber. Oh, the Tuesday game. There we go. So Marcus Stroman apparently was pitching well, and Glaber Torres maybe, I think, made an, made an error or something like that, and came into the dugout and basically shouted at Glaber in the dugout, and Aaron Judge told Stroman, bro, we don't do that here. That's not what we do. And then the next inning, Glaber goes out and proceeds to hit a home run. I think that's what it was. And then after the game, he tweeted out something like, the emotions are running high, I love this game, I love this team, blah, 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 blah. And essentially apologizing, but not really. And so Mark Stroman, who has been known to run hot, right? Yells at team. Justin Steele, however, Justin Steele does not yell at teams, does not run no. hot. And I want to say in his last eight games or something, I want to say his record is like one and eight. And he has gone six, seven innings each time. And he has taken the L. Yes. That time, I don't know if there was an error that preceded this, but he proceeded to walk into the dugout, not even in underneath, into the dugout right under the steps. And just yell like 
fuck off. Didn't care. The camera, camera picked all of it up and I'm all, oh, okay. So I feel like maybe it means a little bit more when a guy that's quiet, yeah, locked in like Justin Steele mm-hmm. goes into the dugout and starts yelling because I want to say oh. after that, the Cubs actually did win that game. Yeah, I'm not sure. Right. Their best first w. They definitely had been playing sloppy defense lately, which I'm fine with, but I don't blame Justin Steele for not being mm-hmm. clean, especially when it is clearly affecting his personal performance as well. But yeah, so tell me, Gals, we realize that this, the baseball diamond is a little bit different, like an office environment, what? whatnot, just a little bit. But how does one take that if the form gets yelled at loudly, violently? In, if you want the kind of workplace that I'm interested in working in, that's not going to happen if you want to keep your job. And I would encourage you that if you do work in an office environment and or any really, I would hope any kind of profession. I don't, I, from a professional standpoint, I do not condone it. I think it happens more frequently than it should and in lots of professional right. things, but it should not happen. It's not something that's okay. And unfortunately, I have actually, I've worked for like small businesses or like startups and stuff that and I have had to be the the HR person without an HR so I think that's part of the feel particularly passionate about topics like this but and now I work for a company that is incredibly amazing and supportive and would never let anything remotely like that happen but it is really interesting to think about it in that context and then put it into this environment because this is their workplace and while yeah it's different and it's certainly there is you know a different place for language and interactions in general there's still got to be... Do you think he was fined for something like that? Or there were any sort of ramifications? I don't know. Let me see if I can show you Justin Steele's Dealey Bob. I saw, like, a picture of it. But, yeah. There we go. Watch Justin Steele. Yeah, he's definitely saying, wake the fuck up. He's angry. Yeah. Think. So, he's, he is fired up. Watch Justin Steele. Yeah, Apparently, after... I, I was reading it, it was after the third like, inning. Really? Miss Apples. I don't know. Um, so yeah. for the audio only people, I will put the link to that video because normally Calm Cool collected Gus and Steel was not happy. Not a happy camper. But yeah, I don't think so. there was a thing, but who knew? Yeah, I'm not sure where like where the uh, man. I know there's a lot of like baseball purists who are listening to me like, you're so soft, blah blah blah. But there's, I don't know, there's a line for sure. And I don't know, all I can think about when I, in the moment when I'm watching that is I'm thinking, again, if we translate it to any other workplace, if something like that is happening where someone's actions and performance is like clearly affecting your ability to do your job, that is the conversation that you have with upper management or the front office and right. something that is a bigger conversation and acting out like that in the moment mm-hmm. would probably not be great not recommended yeah probably not recommended no apparently they did they blew the lead i think is what that they thought and it was yeah for, you know, bad defense so bad yeah defensive errors yeah not great um yeah the tension was building but thing and tensions are building in general because we are halfway through the baseball season now which is pretty crazy like we are truly in the thick of it and this is my favorite time to make predictions Susie, because i'm not a big predictions gal we did our preseason predictions, but my favorite time to make predictions is halfway through the season because we have lived with the teams now. We have been covering them all season long, and we've got a real read on the build, the, the strategy of the teams, and more importantly, the vibes. And so that's where I want to check in with you and ask you for your predictions on MVP, Cy Young, Rookie of the Year, and then we're each going to make a hot take prediction as well as our World Series predictions. Who is your pick right now if the season ended? Not if the season ended today. What is your trajectory from the way things are going right now and the way things playing out? Who is the NL MVP? Is it any question? Is, is it going to? I don't think anyone else from the NL is even remotely in the conversation besides Shohei Otani. That is true. In terms of odds, the betting odds heavily favor Shohei Otani, but I don't like to go off of that. Here's the thing. I think Shohei Otani should have won the MVP last year over Aaron Judge. I think any season where Shohei Otani is hitting over 300 and has an ERA under four, he should win the MVP. That's insane. But he's not doing that this season. And yes, he is an insane hitter. He's an even more insane hitter because he's not pitching. But in terms Mm -hmm. of what MVP means to me and the way that uh, a guy is contributing to his team, I think Mookie Betts would have been my pick. But with him uh, on the shelf for quite a bit now, I'm looking at my guy, Bryce Harper, and I want to see him come back healthy and hopefully not miss too much to where 
he can still be a big part of the conversation. He's taken on a new position and become a very strong first baseman for his team, which has allowed other guys on his team like Alec Bohm to really settle into their own, especially defensively. And then I feel like from that, he's just gone off offensively. So not only is he like himself contributing as a player, he's made the other players around him better as well. So I'm going all in. So then how much do you think being hurt hurts Bryce Harper's chances for that? Yeah, it really just depends on how long he's going to be out. And I'm probably being a little too optimistic because it is a hamstring strain and those kinds of things just take time. But the good word is that it's not severe and hopefully he shouldn't be out for too long. So I think as long as he's not out for longer than a few weeks, three or four at most, which again, maybe being a little too optimistic there, but I think he could still, it, it wouldn't make too much of a dent in his MVP combo. What about the um, American League? I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it because I don't like it. You don't have to. You can say, I think this guy's going to win, but or we know who we think is actually going to win, but who, if it wasn't him, who would it be? Because I'm not going to pick him either. Okay. Cause do I want it to be Gunnar Henderson? Absolutely. Yeah. Like I would 1,000% prefer Gunnar Henderson. And who knows that it, it may happen. It may happen. Yeah. I mean, I think that one's closer conversations right now than than the nl mvp is with otani being the heavy favorite i also just want to throw gunner is definitely my pick too but i want to throw i want to throw steven kwan out there as a guy who's definitely not going to win but i hope he gets more votes than like people anticipate that he will i i hope he is in that top five for sure i don't know if he'll i don't know if he'll get mvp votes steven kwan you think i don't think he'll his get average MVP is insane if he keeps up with what he was doing before he got hurt and it seems like so far he definitely could be then yeah i think he has to maybe he's my sleeper do you know pick. Has, do you know who has the second highest batting average i don't you will never guess Luis red of the los angeles angel oh yes of course baseball of the dwelling there we go yeah we're not even to that segment yet okay give me an nl cy young pick an nl cy young oh boy do I give it to Ranger Suarez? You definitely could. He's certainly going to get votes at this point. I think I'm going I with Ranger Suarez. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm going with Zach Wheeler over Ranger Suarez, but I also think Tyler Glass now is going to be oh. heavily in the conversation. Yeah. Yep. What about AL? I think Tyler Glass now is too. Do I think Ronald Blanco has a chance for Rookie of the Year and Cy Young? Absolutely. I actually, he can't be working there because he's past that threshold, but not young, maybe. But really and truly, it'll probably be one of the stupid rare pitchers. What about Tarek Skubal? Or maybe it'll be, will it be Tarek Skubal? He's my pick. Maybe. I want to see him. That, I, I would like that. That would be nice. But would it also, is Seth Lugo sleepily in the conversation? It definitely is. Yep. Yep. Okay. No, but no. I think maybe like my 1,000% sleeper pick is Rona Blanco. We'll take it. That's fair. You can be a homer. Okay, what about Rookie of the Year? National League Rookie of the Year. National League Rookie of the Year. I think I am going to have to go with Jackson Merrill of the San Diego Padres. That's who I want to pick, too. Like, Shota Imanaga and Paul Skeens are good picks. They're definitely going to get votes, but I am hoping that Jackson Merrill comes through and pushes through for it. And then, of course, my homer pick is Mason Wynn, but I just hope he gets some votes. Yeah. I won't say what there was some stat that Jeff Merrill was the youngest Padre player or maybe youngest player to hit eight home runs in a row or something like that. Yeah, like, well, it was something like that. It, it might be exactly have to, that. Eight like, now I have to go look for Sarah Lang and see what, what she says because I'm almost positive it was something like that. And I think it was a, I think it was a Langs on sports tweet. Here we go. Multi home run games, including a walk off home run in Padres history today, which was June twelfth. Jack DeMero back to back walk off wins. Multi home run game at twenty one years and fifty four days old. Jack DeMero is the youngest player in Padres history with a walk off home run, and that was June twelfth. Yeah, I just so, think he's been like quietly so solid, and he's somebody that maybe other fan bases still are not hearing enough about. Yeah, and Jackson Churio has sneakily gotten mm-hmm. better and better as well. Yeah. But I'm still going with my original Jackson in Jack Merrill, center fielder for the San Diego Padres, who never played an iota of outfield until he got to the uh, major league because he he came up as a shortstop. 
Mm-hmm. Remember, the Padres have 43 shortstops playing all of it. Yep, and he's the one who has figured it out the best wherever they've put him, which is, yeah, pretty awesome. Okay, AL Rookie of the Year. There's not, I don't know, I would say Luis Gill for the Yankees is probably the favorite, but it might be because no of one's the Yankee coming, bias? too. Oh, yeah, that too. But he's fallen off. And when I say fallen off, he has imploded majestically the last mm-hmm. couple of starts that he's had. So I don't know. Maybe some of that shine is wearing off. I think, again, them dirty birds in Baltimore. Yep. I think maybe Jordan Westford may have a sneaky Ooh. case. I was going to say Colton Kowser, but yeah, I think Colton Kowser is who I'm going to throw my way behind. That's my hard pick, but I like where your head's at. And this brings up a good question. Are we going to wear cow print when we go to Camden Yard? Are we going to join the movement? You could wear your Astros gear and some print okay. leggings. Come on. And some cow print leggings. Okay, that I can do. That I can do. Yeah, no, that I can do. Okay, I'm going to work on I'm going to work on our cow print gear. Okay. I'm going to have to, you know what? I'm going to have to find pictures of my senior year of high school. We were the Cowboys. My high school, we were the Cowboys. And I was a big student counselor. And... I ran for a state student council vice president position. And my shtick was I wore a cow print fuzzy hat and fuzzy cow print pants. They were like, like Iowa. widely. Yeah. Let's pull those out. Oh. I'm going to have to find, I'm going to have to find those pictures because I won, by the way, and I wrapped vanilla ice. I wrapped my speech and it was right. delightful, but only after I froze and forgot the word. And then it was all JK. I had it memorized, but now I don't. So. If you guys would like me to say it, I can. I have it in my pocket. Do you guys want me to sing it? I have it. So then I had to pull it out of my pocket and read. I was, it was possibly the most embarrassing thing that I had ever done, but I had so many people come up to me afterwards and say, oh my God, Susie, I'm voting for you just for the sheer yeah. fact that you didn't run off the stage crying. And I was like, yeah, you followed I mean, through. It makes you human. It's even better. Yeah. I, well, I was like, thank you. Thank you for that. I, I appreciate it. And, they, and they're like, were you not embarrassed? And I go, oh no, legitimately embarrassed. Like even more embarrassing now talking about it. But yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we're wearing cow print and we're rapping at Camden Yards. That's what I heard. Great. I'm ready Perfect. for it. I yeah. want you to give me a hot take prediction. What is something that you think is going to happen that is going to shock all of baseball before the end of the 2024 season? The Astros beat the Yankees in the ALCS. Okay. There See, I'm gonna I'm gonna do you one better. I don't think the Yankees make it to the CS. <laughs> Who's beating them? Is the Orioles? I don't know. The Orioles, yes, for sure. I don't care who's beating them. I just have this feeling that they are going to fizzle out. They, I'm not saying they won't be in the postseason, but I don't think they're going to make it past the division series. <laughs> I will eat my words if I have to, but that's it's just a feeling that I'm having. Okay, who is your? What's your World Series prediction? I want the two teams that are going to play, and who do you think is going to win? Not who you want. Think, what do you think? What do you feel? What I feel? I'm trying. I'm okay. The reason this look is on my face is I'm really trying to figure out if I truly, genuinely, with all of my baseball heart, mm-hmm. believe in the Guardians. Because I don't think I do. And I don't think I don't think I believe in that rotation at all. So unless the Guardians pick up at least one more starting arm, at no point in time do I think the Guardians have a World Series winning, even contending rotation. Because at no point in time are you running... Tanner Whitey out there as your one. Like that, I just don't, even though he's been great, he's been great for them. I just don't think it's going to happen. So I'm really trying to believe, I'm trying to like decide if I truly am being a homer and saying it's going to be the Astros from the AL or what can actually happen to the Guardians. And I actually do think it's going to be the Astros. Okay, Astros versus? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's going to be the Phillies. I think it's going to be a arena 2022. So I do, I think the Guardians are that for real. And I think if they can figure out any way to do exactly what you said to to solidify the starting pitching, I just have this feeling that the Guardians are going to upset the Orioles in the CS and it's going to be a Guardians-Phillies World Series. I do believe the Phillies will win in six. That's my official World Series prediction. Okay. If it's Guardians-Phillies World Series, I think you're on the money. I think, but I think the Phillies are going to steamroll them. Do you think if, the Astros get it together and have their healthy A roster. If it's Astros versus Phillies, what does that look like? 
out if it's Astros versus Phillies and we actually have a starting rotation of healthy guys and we have Kyle Tucker back in the lineup I think it's going to be a dog fight I think it's going to be but I think it's going to be Astros in seven I think I think this team can do it if that's a big if we can get any sort of like a semblance of a starting pitching rotation that doesn't include two freaking rookies and Fromberg, who's a head case. Those are all big ifs, people. Lots of ifs, but there's lots of ifs for every team. That's just the way that this game goes, which I think is the perfect way to transition to our baseball is baseballing segment. The the Mets and the Yankees played in the Subway Series, and as we all predicted, the Mets swept the Yankees. This was like the precursor to Marcus Stroman going off on his team, as we talked about, but yeah, man, they're just riding the Grimace vibes all the way through the Bronx. I fucking loved it. Yeah. Loved it. My petty self said, do it, do it. And I was, because I want to say the first game was close, right? Yeah. But then the second game, it was all met. And I was a happy person. This was hardly on my radar, but you've got here that the Angels are on a six game winning streak. They, we yes, they were. Angels in a while. So I guess we, this is a good time in this baseball is baseballing segment. They made the news. Yeah. But yeah, the, I was correct. The second game, the Mets, this beat the breaks off the Yankees 12 to 2. Uh-huh. The first game was nine, nine to seven. And I remember now because Aaron Judge hit a grand slam in that game and got Ooh, much closer yes. than it needed to be. Yeah. So, but yes, the Angels went on a six game winning streak and it was, they swept the A's for three and then they took three of four from the Tigers and they almost swept the Tigers in that four game series hmm. last night. Hmm. And so it was the Tigers scored one in the first, three in the fifth, three in the sixth. And that was all she wrote for the Tigers. Angels scored one in the sixth and five in the bottom of the ninth. All right. Yeah. So Taylor Ward got hit by a pitch. 93. Oh, yeah. I'm like, how many times does this man need to be hit in the head? Because he got hit in the head yet last season Mm -hmm. by hit by pitch too. But apparently because of that hit by pitch, he now has an extra strong part of that helmet because it was like up by his ear. But it was like that, like the part of their batty helmet that thankfully... That got hit instead, but it was like a 93 mile an hour fastball to his head. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, so he got hit by pitch. Brendan Jury grounded out. Miguel Snow lined out. And then they watched Matt Thice. And this was all Shelby Miller. Do you remember Shelby Miller from the Dutcher? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Shelby Miller. Yeah. I remember um, Shelby Miller from the Cardinals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but Shelby Miller walked Matt Thice and then gave up a Zach Neto home run. And it was like up on his own. So Zach Neto went um, and got it. So shout mm-hmm. out Zach, Zach Neto. And uh, it was seven to four, and then M- Mickey Moniak singles Joe Adele hit a home run, and then it was seven to six. Damn, yeah, Shelby Miller was my forty man find for the Detroit Tigers, so yeah, not a great way to Detroit. highlight him specifically, but a great way to get the Angels in on our conversation. But Wash is doing the things that he said that he would do, and not gonna lie, like I really enjoy Ron Washington with those guys, and I don't know if Angels fans love him as much as I love him. Really, that young team, bro. Yeah. I've heard some mixed reviews because of the Zach Neto. I think it was the quote was Zach Neto or was it Shaniwell? I don't know. Oh, yeah, no, it you was about Shaniwell. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Couldn't, was too sleepy for day games or something. Yes. Yes. And then, and Wash sat him down, didn't blame for a couple of day games. And now Shaniwell gets up just fine for sleep. Like, yeah. But, Wearing out the dirty laundry. So maybe they yeah. don't like him doing that. But but if it gets the guys playing better in, like, that team is really, still really young. Zach Neto and Nolan Chanuel, I want to say, are, like, 21, 22. He's still being college, right? Like, missing yeah. class and switching. Exactly. And, exactly. You know? That is the kind of figure that they need. Mm-hmm. So, especially they don't have it on the team in terms of they don't have that veteran leadership necessarily. Yeah. Especially with Trout. God, and Rendon has gone, too. What yeah. they do? And apparently, Mike Trout. It was looking like he's going to go on. We so love like, that. For my yeah. And then Baseball. Anthony Rendon is running on a treadmill. He is doing things. He is doing things on a treadmill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good Maybe. But the Angels are making a push. They are they were only half a game behind the Rangers. Oh, oh God. God. We had, uh, oh, all right. Rangers, what are you doing? Rangers are falling. The Astros, so though. We've just risen our stock. Hopefully, we're going to be talking about lots of guys coming back and getting healthy for, I know you don't want to hear about that for the Rangers. That will probably be happening, hopefully, for the Astros and a lot of teams. But 
couple injury updates for guys that are unfortunately on the shelf as of this week. We talked about Bryce Harper, who if you were, if you joined us on the Variety Sports Network the other night, uh, Stephen and I got a live look at that and you'll see our live reaction to watching Bryce Harper strain his hamstring, which was very shocking and sad. Okay, I have to tell you this. I have to admit to this today. So I live like less than 10 miles from Bryce Harper. I know I'm like, I'm less than four miles for everything. But no, literally I do. Like he literally it's five miles, very close. And it has, there are people that live in these neighborhoods all around me. And it is a common thing to see Bryce Harper at the store doing normal things with his family, which is very cool. We love that about Bryce Harper. He seems like that kind of guy. But I went to Target today and I saw a probably mid 30s something man who was very tall and athletic build. And he had a hat on and he had the hair and the beard like, like Bryce Harper. I did not see his face. I was walking into the store behind him. And he had a cane of sorts and was like limping. Maybe he was, maybe he's a retired athlete who was like recovering from surgery or just a guy, a normal guy who, I don't know, had an injury. And here, the first thought in my mind was like, surprise, I'm plug. Yep. And then immediately I was like laughing like this at myself being like, you fucking idiot. Together, stop trying to see Bryce Harper everywhere you go. And you see this man limping through Target. And you're, That's, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. Bryce, I love that. I hope you're laying in a hammock and not going on target runs and getting well soon. Kyle Schwarber also out in the same game, went down with a groin injury. And these guys are apparently guys who have not dealt with soft tissue injuries a lot. So that's where it's a little murky. But the Phillies have reported that neither of them seem super severe and hopefully not super long term because the Phillies need those big boppers in there. They've also got waiting on JT Realm Muto to come back. Fernando Tatis Jr., maybe he can practice his boy band skills because he is on the IL with a stress reaction in his right leg, which sounds incredibly awful and painful and is a bummer because a player like him, he's obviously gone through some personal struggles. We haven't seen him on the field as much as we'd like to the last few years, and this could take him out for a while, it sounds like. All right, that makes me so sad because the Padres have been on a, like I said, had been on a roll, and Fernando is a big part of that, but the other guys are stepping up and winning games instead winning games that instead is not the word that i wanted to use there but apparently that's the word we're going to use because no other words are coming in my brain anyway yeah so patrick sandoval again goes down with tj and is that the third thousand pitcher that went down this season that needs tj it is at least the 43rd thousandth it might yeah it might be the 11th hundredth hundredth we've lost track at this point okay. that's a it's quite a lot quite it a, is. a lot sucks it sucks to just keep hearing about it. Like, it seems it's just who's next. Exactly. And I just, we're really hoping that it's not anybody else from the freaking Astros starting rotation. It's going to be interesting, too, to see what the buyer's market is like for pitching playing into this. Because I don't know if front offices are trying to analyze, like, pitchers that rely heavily on maybe on more of the certain types of pitches than others. Are the guys who are going down with this or based on their age and how long they've been pitching, are they more susceptible to this? But you got to think it's, it's always a factor. It's one of the biggest risk factors that teams are constantly evaluating. And it's going to be interesting to see the kind of uh, pitchers who are prioritized and have the highest value because we thought that there'd be quite a few teams that are out there buying for the old dog like Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson that are just going out there and eating those innings right up. Yep. Yeah, that would be, you would be correct in that because like I said, the Astros have a, literal full starting rotation on the aisle and so dumb it's the dumbest thing ever so we're just creeping by at this one time but really and truly are you going to have to not pitch breaking ball not pitch breaking ball often like will what justin verlander can do and fit 93 94 but then have the ability to get to 96 97 98 if you really need to is that going to be a thing can that be like a footnote in people's charts hey i have the ability to ramp up there i just don't live there because i keep asking random people this and it's not actual pitchers so i need to i need to ask actual people who know how to pitch and do that type of thing is that a thing that more pitchers can actually do because yeah i know tyler glasner said that he can't do it He's got to go full right. throttle. Over yeah. I was gonna say he's the one that I have heard talk about it of how that doesn't translate for. He made it seem like for pitchers in general the way that he talked about it. But then you do see guys like Justin Berlander who have made it work for them and have made it a signature thing of their career. So. Yeah, 
Yeah. And then Hunter Brown can also do that too. Mm-hmm. And so that we've always said that Hunter Brown, like his delivery looks like Justin Verlander. So I don't know if it's the delivery that is able to do that or mm. if, if it's the way they grip the ball. Do you know what I'm saying? So Absolutely. I don't know if it's the correlation because Hunter Brown is now in the rotation. Which, what's JV that he's able to do that or if he was able to do that before? Or that's like a transferable skill. That's like a learned skill. Yeah. I don't know. If you are a pitcher, would like to talk to us about this. I would love to talk to you. So drop it in yeah, the it, if you will shed any light on her. It seems yeah, it like the majority of guys, their stuff is so significantly less effective without the velocity that there isn't a way for them to ha- add that as like a nuance. And so you look at a guy like Justin Verlander and it's amazing, but there's just not, there's not pitchers out there like Justin Verlander anymore. And will there ever yeah. be again? You hope the pendulum's got to swing back at some point. But it highlights even more how incredible it is what he's done. And hopefully he'll be able to do it to some extent to finish out a career here on a high note. Yeah. But I think it, I think it goes as far down as like little league pitching. They yes, got to reach the entire system in order for all of these arm injuries to, to stop. And unfortunately, that, it's not going to happen. Because yeah. what gets the highlights? What gets all the, the name recognition? It's Paul Skeen throwing one or two mm-hmm. with a dirty slider. So I'm like... So it's not, it's never the guy that they're on 86, but can dot it up anywhere. Well, could that be effective? Absolutely. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna happen, especially if they start to implement all of these, the rumors of like rules incentivizing having your starter go longer. Like the, the writing is on the wall for what plays in terms of having a career that, of longevity. And ba- Major League Baseball wants to bring it back to that. It's just a matter of, how, I don't think it'll ever go back to as, as far as it was at one point. But I don't know. There's still enough guys who like command is still the number one part of their game, like Sonny Gray out there that I don't know. It's definitely the the next two or three years are going to be super interesting after this season and the way that injuries are going to dictate the development of pitchers in the way that pitchers are utilized right now. But then, as you said, like, will it change the way that pitchers are developed for many years to come? Yeah, that's true. Okay, so let me end on this note. I don't want to because I don't. I know. But as a fan of baseball, we have to talk about it. And we have to give this guy his flowers because yeah. what he's doing is actually fucking amazing. And the fact that it is the halfway point of the season and the, this man has 31 home runs. Yeah. Aaron Judge, congratulations. Yeah, he's officially Thanks. on Triple Crown Watch. Yep. 31 Explain home runs. Explain to the people what Triple Crown is. So every year, each league crowns a batting average title, who has the highest batting average, who has the the highest number of home runs, and who has the most RBIs. And it is a very rare and prestigious feat if the same person were to claim all three of those titles, and therefore they would get the title of Triple Crown. And right now, Aaron Judge is on track to absolutely have that happen. Yes. Yep. So right now, Aaron Judge has 31 home runs. 82 RBIs and a 316 batting average, which is technically tied for third with Ren Hifo being second with 317. And then Stephen Kwan just being absolutely ridiculous with a 368 batting average. Yeah. So I don't want to give Aaron Judge his flowers, but I have to because we are a fan of baseball. And what he is doing is absolutely amazing. However, if Aaron Judge is out of that Yankee lineup, where are the Yankees? Yeah, just like last season. And that's the thing is I don't know how sustainable that is. I still question it, but it is pretty cool because the last batting triple crown was in 2012 with Miguel Cabrera. And before that, it was 1967. Mike Yastrzemski. Wow. Uh, grandfather Carl Yastrzemski. Oh, my God. Yeah, a little baseball trivias for you as people. Yeah. So if he does it, this is going to be a storyline surely for the rest of the season if he stays healthy and stays anywhere on track. It would be pretty. How many home runs did he hit last season? Was it 62? Last season or in 2022 was when he, or no, it was. It was was last season, right? It might have been sponsored. I thought it was the last season when he broke the home run. 2022. I keep referring to, I think Shohei Otani should have won the MVP last year. He did win last year. I think he should have won in 2022 is what I mean. Okay. So yeah, it was in 2022. 
that he won MVP. Hmm. With how many, but how many home runs did he hit? Is that he got to 62, right? Or did he 62. actually get to 62 was the number that he had to get to. Clearly we're like big Yankees fans over here. I'm trying to listen to people. I'm trying to remember this from you do. the yeah. depths of my soul. I remember here. he like just hit it, but I was like, did he just hit 62 or did he get 63? 62. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, he's dead on track to do it again. So he is half from the way there. Mm-hmm. Do you think he does it again? I would be shocked if he ever has a season quite like that again. It's just so hard to do, but the numbers don't lie. And he's on track to have even more RBIs than he did in that season. One soda than started in this season. So yeah, you never do know. All right. If you are watching this on the YouTubes, press that like button on this episode. Press the red subscribe button because we would appreciate that. And let us know if you think Aaron Judd will reach that mark, will surpass that mark. If he will indeed win the triple crown, do you or do you think Stephen Kwan's not nah, batting average is mine, bro? I would love that. Like I said, right? I just want I want Stephen Kwan to get his flowers too. Did you see how big of a jump Stephen Kwan batting average got after um, Angel Hernandez retired? I did hear some talks about that. Same with White Lankford. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, are I that is not shocking, but a little shocking. Also, congratulations to Wyatt Langford for being the youngest player in Rangers history to hit for a cycle. Mm-hmm. That yeah. Yeah. Did that yeah, last night? Yeah, he'll get some rookie. rookie of the Year votes for sure. Especially if he turns it on. Especially if he turns it on. Because he had been, he's just now getting locked in and doing things. Because was, he was a little cold there at the beginning of the season. But with that, we are going to wrap it up. Kelsey, tell people where they can find you on the interwebs. You can find me on Twitter for all the good baseball content at Kbird Tweets. That's K B U R D Tweets. That's also the name of my YouTube channel where you can find my weekly podcast, Peace, Love, and Baseball. You can also listen to Peace, Love, and Baseball wherever you get your podcast. And if I'm not there, I'm here on Bourbon and Baseball. Susie, where can they find us? They can find Bourbon and Baseball on the YouTubes. Bourbon and Baseball, obviously. They can find Bourbon and Baseball on Apple, Spotify, and any podcast platforms. Just type in Bourbon and Baseball. You will find the show. If you have not given the show a five-star review, excuse me, five-star ra- rating, please do that. Five stars. Five star people. Give us all the nice words because maybe, just maybe, if you write down a compliment, it will warm my black, cold, dead heart. You'll never know. We'll never know unless it actually happens. And then maybe it'll give me good feelings and then I will let you guys know if I showed it to you or not. It's like a science experiment. Isn't that kind of fun? We are going to wrap that up and say, yay, baseball.